Motion controls have a somewhat complicated history on Nintendo consoles. Some people really like them, while others will literally avoid playing a game that relies too heavily on them. I think a lot of it has to do with how they're implemented in a game. No one is really complaining about Wii Sports, but I've heard a lot of annoyed opinions on Skyward Sword's motion controls even though I love them. So today I wanted to see if we could easily set up some basic motion control weapons in Game Builder Garage. Switch light enjoyers, I'm sorry in advance, since the gyro controls are based on a permanent starting location, I couldn't come up with a comfortable solution right now, but if you know a good method, let me know. I also made this little motion control test wing room with a bunch of the things in it that I'll show you how to do today, game ideas on the screen and in the description if you wanted to jump in and try them. Today we're going to make a sword that you can swing around freely, add a jab or forward thrust attack for some variety, then swap it out for an arm cannon before finally exploring some alternative holding methods. We're starting out with our basic first person character controller. We have our movable person, the camera, and an invisible box on his head so that we can place the camera in a good spot. All of our basic motion control function is going to be done through the right and left hand nodon. We're going to save our left one for later, and there are two main inputs to the hand nodon. There's a grab, which can be used as a button or a toggle, and an input for forward back movement once we have grabbed something. We're not going to really focus on those right now since we're going to attach the sword directly to the hand first. We'll start by adding in our sword, which will be a basic box object. I'll play around with the size, making sure that the Y is the longest variable since we're going to have a long and thin object to represent the sword. We can add a texture later to make it look better. We'll want the connection point to be Y negative, Z positive, so that the bottom of the box attaches to the front of the hand. Then you simply attach the hand to the object, and immediately you have a movable sword but the game won't know whether it's doing something that could classify as an attack or not. To do that, we're going to add a speed sensor. You could also work it out to use an acceleration sensor, but speed was more stable when I tried it out. Now, the speed sensor is going to give you three outputs. It'll give you the speed of the object moving on the X, Y, and Z axis. We want any kind of movement in any direction to check whether the sword is attacking. So we're gonna take an absolute value node on and plug all three of those outputs directly into the input. Every game world is gonna be different and have different sizes, so the speeds will vary a lot. What you need to do is add in a number object node on and attach the output of the absolute value to it. Then you can do some testing, try a soft strike, try whipping it around as fast as you can, and try to identify a number that is the lower limit of an attack. Basically, if the ultimate speed of the sword is higher than this number, then we would be hurting or breaking whatever it is that the sword is touching. Then you'll want to add a greater than comparison node on and attach a constant to the bottom input with that number you came up with. Based on the sizes that I'm using and my ability, I thought that 15 was a good benchmark. Then once you've set that up, you'll want to test it and make sure that you can consistently pull off a swinging attack. A good way to do this would be to just add a sound node on to the output of the comparison. That way you can sort of debug it and get some audio feedback to tell you that you're actually swiping with the sword. You can change that to a whoosh if you want and leave it there so that the player also knows when they're doing something that's constituting an attack. We'll throw in a wormhole entrance so that we can track when that attack is happening for our enemies or breakable objects. And if all you wanted to do was destroy objects directly, you can just add a destroy object node on, make it a bit bigger than the sword, and attach the output of this comparison into the destroy input. That would make it so that anything that's destroyable by the destroy object node on would just be destroyed whenever you're swinging the sword. But what we're going to do is create an enemy character that takes multiple hits. We'll start by taking out a fancy object, in this case I'm going to use a robot, and you'll then want a touch sensor that is a bit bigger than that object. The touch sensor is going to be detecting the sword, and then we're going to set it to check for whatever the sword is made out of. You might want to increase the size of this touch sensor and play around with it, because sometimes the speed of a swing will decrease at the end, and you'll want to still capture that attack. Then we'll add in the input from our wormhole exit, and connect it to an AND node on where the other input is the touch sensor. That way, when the player is swinging the sword fast enough that it constitutes an attack, and the sword is within the damage area of the enemy, will want to trigger damage. If you want to prevent some bugs or the ability to wiggle the sword on the enemy to keep attacking it, you can add a trigger from zero node on so that it only outputs for each individual swipe of the sword, and then we'll plug that into the countdown on a simple counter that starts out at the number of hits you want the enemy to survive. So I'm going to use three, so three hits should reduce the counter to zero. Then we'll use a not node on that will go off once the counter reaches zero and we can use that to destroy our original fancy object using the destroy object node on. 
Just make sure all the settings are fine tuned so that the robot can be destroyed by the nodon and the destroy object nodon is set to destroy robots. I always mess this up because I never check all those flags. You can also add a damage effect to show that you actually hurt the enemy player. Now when we go into our world and we test it out, it works. If we're swiping hard enough to activate an attack, we'll do some damage to the enemy, throw them around a little bit, and if we hit them three times, they get destroyed. And it's looking pretty good. But what we're gonna do now is add a little variety with a jab attack. We'll start with a button press. In this case, I'm gonna use R. And what we're gonna do is manipulate the output of the button press and attach it to the forward and backward input on the hand. We're gonna take out a constant node on, I would set it to a bigger number like 50, and then we'll attach it to a multiplication calculate node on that has the button press in it. Want to make sure that the button is set to on press so it only outputs a signal for one frame, and then we'll put the positive output from the calculate node on into the forward and backward input on the hand. So when we press that button, it will go forward by the amount that is in the constant node on. We'll also want it to go back to the player once it's done doing that. So we'll invert the signal of the constant with an inversion node on and multiply that versus the output of a not node on that's attached to the button. So when we press the button, we're going forward by 10 or 50 units. And when we're not pressing the button, we'll retract the sword. This may be hard to see sometimes, so you'll want to add some kind of player feedback, like a whoosh sound or a different sound. And when you add a texture to it, it'll be more visible, but now we have a forward thrust or jab attack if you don't always feel like swinging the sword around violently. So now what we're going to quickly do is push this over to the side and add in a cylinder for a simple arm cannon. This is much easier than the sword since we don't have to check for motion, unless you wanted to leave that in there and make it so you can whack enemies to destroy them instead of shoot them also, which could be kind of cool. We'll add in a cylinder, remove its destructive properties, and give it the connection point Y negative, Z positive again, so it's facing away from the player. Then I'm going to color it orange so it looks a little different. We'll just attach that directly to the hand and add a launch object node on to the end of it to launch out your projectiles. We're just going to attach it to the cylinder and then you can mess with the settings. We're going to make the launch direction Y positive so we'll shoot out of the top of the cylinder which is facing away from the player. You can give it a launch speed that you're comfortable with and affect the material, zero gravity if you don't want it to fall off in the distance, and your launch interval. You could do things like add timers and sound effects and different things to change how your arm cannon works. Then all you'd have to do is add in your button press to activate the arm cannon and you're good to go. So you can easily swap out your sword and your arm cannon from the edit screen. Another thing you could do is attach the different hands to different weapons. So you can have an arm cannon in one hand and a sword in the other hand. Though it does start to look a little bit cluttered, it could be fun. One of the last things we're gonna do is play around with the grab settings on the hand node on. So what you can do is take a grab button, in this case, L for left hand and R for right hand. You can plug the grab button into the grab input on the hand, which means it'll grab the object that it's currently facing. It won't start with an object attached and we'll switch the grab mode to toggle. That way when you press L or R once, it'll grab that object and hold onto it until you press it again. And we can make it so that the L or R button through an inversion node on while held will bring the object closer to you. The reason you'd wanna do that is because now you can put your weapons in the game world and then have the player grab and select them. They won't line up perfectly with the hands as they would if you attach them immediately, but this does give you the option to swap out or switch your weapons in game while playing. And it could be useful if you wanna have multiple weapons or different types of swords with different speed requirements, for example, or arm cannons or blasters that shoot different projectiles. Now to get to the sword and shield model that I showed you at the beginning, it's really simple. I just added another box in between the box that contains the shield, gave it the same connection point as before, Y negative, Z positive, and then I attached a solid box to the front and gave it a shield texture. Now we can wave it around and use it to deflect things in the game world. And with the sword, all I did was add a texture on the Z center. You can push things around or block things with your shield and you can use your sword to attack or thrust on enemies. The motion controls actually feel really good since the Joy-Cons are responsive and snappy, and you can play around with the settings and the hand node on and change the joints where they attach to the person. How do you feel about motion controls in games, and have you used motion controls in any of your Game Builder Garage games? Let me know in the comments.